So today we're going to be playing a DCS mission and it'll be a rather interesting one because it's meant to be a loose reenactment of a real sortie, rather well known one in the world of military aviation. One that happened at the first daylight of Operation Desert Storm. The Gulf War had begun under the cover of night with coalition aircraft unleashing a massive aerial campaign after Saddam Hussein refused to pull his forces out of the way before the UN Security Council's deadline. The scenes were shot on the first night of the attack when, uh, when it began just before 3 o'clock in the morning in Baghdad uh, from our... Among the staggering number of military aircraft mobilized were US Navy Strike Fighter Squadron 81, Sunliners, based off the carrier, the USS Saratoga. A member of the squadron, Lieutenant Commander Scott Spiker, had failed to return to ship after flying a mission near Baghdad the night before. With day breaking, mere hours after the grim incident, Four FA-18 Hornets of the BFA-81 would fly Desert Storm's first daylight strike. All right. So here we are in the FA-18 Hornet, uh, starting coal on the carrier. Gonna go ahead and start this bird up. You can hear the engines revving uh, from my flight members here to the left. I'm gonna crank my right engine here. Uh, I'm gonna admit that I usually cut corners a bit in my coal start procedure, so don't make me an example for that. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the mission a bit. We will be launching as a Hornet 4 ship. We'll be bombing an airbase in Western Iraq. We'll be supported by a number of aircraft, uh, including, yeah, including the E-2 Hawkeye that is about to take off to my right here, momentarily. So the E-2 will of course be providing early warning as well as air control support for today's mission. Uh, I believe the real Hornets were also accompanied by Growler aircraft providing electronic warfare and jamming support, but I don't think that's modeled in DCS so for this particular rendition we won't be having any of that. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and close the canopy to keep out the engine noises here. Attention all deck crew, attention all deck crew. If you take a look to your south, you'll see some inbound friendly aircraft. Enjoy the flyby. Right. So speaking of aircraft that will be supporting us in this mission, uh, we will be rendezvousing with a flight of F-15s at Waypoint 2, who will be flying as our escorts and will be trying to protect us from some of the airborne threats that are expected over Iraq today. Here they are, flying over the carrier right now. Quite the sight. So with Operation Desert Storm kicking off, coalition aircraft have been trying to cripple and disable Iraq's air force and air defense systems. They've been launching strikes all night and we are basically flying the first mission of the daylight 
Our target is H3 Airbase. We are each armed with four Mark 84 2,000 pound bombs and uh, our objective is basically to lay waste to the airbase and eliminate its ability to launch aircraft. And I'll go ahead and check my takeoff checklist here. Overlord 1, one passing waypoint 2 at 600. Uh, yeah, we need to trim. So we are a pretty heavy plane here. We're going to trim up to about 19, I think, would be the right. There we go, 19. Uh, I think we are about ready to taxi to Cat 1 for takeoff. Here we are, uh, Cat 1. Our wings are extending. Gonna go ahead and lower the launch bar as well. Get in position here. Go. Our wings are fully extended. Gonna go ahead and stow them. Number two, getting in position on Cat 2. We're gonna give them some time to get into position here. You can see number three back there. And we're off. Gears up, flaps up, and uh, we are airborne. Gonna start. Offsetting to the right here, kind of vector towards our first waypoint. And that's the boat. So we are going to head towards land, naturally, and uh, we're going to start with a relatively gentle climb, give our flight members some time to rejoin on us, and it's going to be a bit of a flight from here to the target area, though not nearly as long as in real life. I believe in real life it takes something like an hour and a half of flight to get from the carrier to the target area. So fortunately we have a simplified version here. Pull up here a little bit, try to climb a little bit faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to imitate the real life pilots and climb to a cruising altitude of about 30,000 feet, Angels 30. And uh, we can already see the desert landscape starting to spread out beneath us. Very nice. So I'm going to take this time to start configuring my bombs as well. Springfield, Enfield 1-1, one, one. copy that. So we are getting close to waypoint 2, which is where we will rendezvous with uh, Springfield, which is the F-15 flight that will be escorting us. And you probably heard from the radio there, but the call sign for our flight today is Enfield 1. And uh, Overlord will be the E-2 control that's supporting the mission. 
We're starting to get above the clouds here. It's very beautiful. And you can even see some smoke columns on the ground there. Remnants from all the bombardment that's been going on all night. Look at the landscape. It's really quite beautiful. We are flying well above the clouds by now. Still a good ways away from the next waypoint. Alright, sounds like we have company. Overlord 1 1, passing waypoint 3 uh, and Looks like hostile hour. aircraft to our 3 o'clock. Enfield 1 1, Overlord, stay on mission. The F 15s will intercept. Overlord Enfield 1 1, copy that, staying on mission. Alright, so it looks like our escort flight of F 15s will be taking care of the threat for us. So we. Uh, the strike package will just uh, stay the course and continue towards the target area. Right, so I've got my countermeasures program set up and I've gone ahead and called the flight into a line abreast sort of formation here. And uh, you can actually see the contrails of the F-15 flight vectoring off to deal with the threat. Very cool. So anyway here we are also imitating the real pilots who also flew into the target area in a wall line abreast sort of formation. So we're doing the same thing here. Three to three. Enfield one one overlord. Engage the new pop up group uh, to the north before attacking the airfield. Enfield one one copies. Right. So it appears that we have company again, bearing three to three to the north this time. Another group of hostile aircraft. It would appear, and uh, our escort F-15s have already vectored to deal with the eastern group. So it appears that we are going to have to engage this northern group of bandits ourselves, which uh, the Hornet is capable of doing. We are also armed with air-to-air -air missiles, all of us, and uh, we can switch to air-to-air -air mode with a flick of a switch, which I just went ahead and did there, selected the Sparrow missiles. So we are going to be putting the multi-role capability of the Hornet to the test here. So our bandits are still some ways away. So this is a little different from the real-life version of events, where I believe the real pilots were only 
uh, fully aware of the bandits when the bandits were like 15 miles off the nose. So we have a lot more uh, room to work with in this version. And uh, also, in general, the, the picture in DCS is much simpler. We have no complicated rules of engagement, uh, no visual ID requirements and such. So our hostiles will not hesitate to fire upon us at first opportunity, and uh, neither would we. Got them in radar range now. Flight engagement. Gonna get my flight to go ahead and engage. So some of them are gonna start pushing burner and pulling ahead here, which is good. So what we want to do here is to try to finish this in a single pass. So we have the numerical advantage here, there are four of us, the two of them. So we'll be able to fire four missiles in the first pass and hopefully that's going to be enough to uh, smoke both of them. Uh, because if you miss and you merge with them, then it's going to become a turn fight and you really don't want a turn fight with 8,000 pounds worth of bombs strapped to your wings. Especially not against DCS MiG-21 AI, by the way. So I've got some flight members pulling ahead here, and they will fire first, and that's going to be good because hopefully they'll push the bandits defensive and let me get much closer for a lethal shot. Here we go. Lead bandit locked up here, pulling close, and uh, lead bandit is pulling to the side here to avoid that missile. And uh, I'm closing in here. Seven miles, Fox one on lead bandit. So my missile is tracking there. Come on. Well, there's a splash up top there, splash one. My missile's still tracking. And splash! Splash two, splash two, we got both of them. section and had fireball down each side of his airplane. Alright, so we were able to take care of that. And uh, it looks like our F-15s were successful in neutralizing the threat group to the east. And so uh, the skies are clear for now. And we are going to go ahead and resume our original bombing mission. So we came quite a bit off course in order to engage uh, the threat group that we did. So uh, we're going to have to do quite a bit of backtracking here. Uh, I'm going to try to go back and intercept the original course line. Uh, I really want to approach the target area from the pre-planned direction. So backtracking here. Also going to start going a bit lower, reducing our altitude uh, in preparation for the bombing runs. Here we go. Getting below the clouds now.
so we are expecting a uh, relatively light resistance from the target airbase uh, the real hornets of course were supported by growler aircraft that was jamming the iraqi radar signals and they were also supported by uh, an umbrella of harm missiles flying overhead that would either suppress or destroy any SAM sites that might come online. So we are not expecting to deal with any SAM defense systems today as well. You can just see the target airfield there. We've got visual now. So we are primarily expecting to deal with AAA fire here. About time to get my flight to attack now. Right, gonna get them to go. Fight. Right, so it's go time. Let's set this as CCIP here. Right. So a major reason I really wanted to approach the target airfield from the pre-planned direction is because I know from my briefing that all four targets that are assigned to me are actually roughly aligned along a straight line, roughly aligned with the runway. So I'm going to try to do something slightly risky here. I'm going to do a shallow dive uh, aligned with the runway as you can see here and I'm gonna try to pass over all four targets in a single pass and drop all of my bombs in one pass come to measures flying and all that so that's the plan here we go uh, nine degree shallow dive here closing in on the target right closing in Countermeasures away and pickle, and pickle, pickle, and pickle, bombs away. I think those are pretty good hits. And that's my flight members dropping their bombs. So as planned, I've dropped all four of my bombs uh, in that single pass, but I'm pretty sure the rest of my flight members will be dropping theirs uh, one at a time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, stabilize at a reasonable altitude here, uh, put myself on altitude hole. And I'm just gonna circle around the target area and uh, basically keep an eye out, keep eyes on for any potential threats, aircraft, uh, man pads perhaps, and uh, watch my flight. Basically enjoy the show.
All right, I believe that's it. I think everybody has dropped all of their bombs here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and call them back to rejoin. Flight, join up. And all that's left to do now is to egress out of the target area, uh, southwards back towards the boat, and uh, try to have all of us get back on the ship in one piece. We're also going to be climbing, we're going to be egressing at the same cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. So we're going to be climbing shortly here. Once you get up here, the sun is shining, the skies are blue. It really is a beautiful morning. And you know, it does feel kind of surreal, you know, even in a virtual environment like this, how no matter what's going on on the ground, all of the fighting and the fire and war, once you're up here, you know, everything is so peaceful and so beautiful. It's a strange feeling. Overload and view 1-1, one, one. copy that. Right, we're gonna go ahead and switch our radio to channel 3 here. And then we're gonna go ahead and contact Mother, which is the ship, for inbound. Zero, one, zero. Inbound. One one five copy. So we're gonna fly heading one one five here. Uh, the tower would usually direct us to a point roughly ten miles to the stern of the ship, which is exactly where we want to be for recovery. So we are about 28 miles from the ship now, I'm gonna start diving a little, well diving quite aggressively because we are very high up right now and it's gonna take a while for us to get anywhere near deck level which is where we want to be for landing.
Alright, so we're gonna do our final landing checks, hook this down, uh, anti-skid off, radar altimeter, ILS, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop our altitude and pull our way towards the stern of the ship, which is where we want to be for the landing pattern, case one. We are overhead the carrier now. Right about there. I'm gonna rip my throttle to idle and we are into the break. I did not expect all of us to survive that mission. We lost Spike Night One. We are going in to the belly of the beast. My knees were shaking, and I just told myself, I said, this is it. I signed up to do this. I may die, but uh, I was excited to be alive. You know, I wish we never had to go to war. Uh, don't like taking a life. It was, you know, it's kill or be killed. It, it's hard. I, I dropped bombs on buildings and facilities there as part of the war. You know, I'm proud of my service and what I did, but... I think we can be more civilized. I don't think we're going to do it in our lifetime, but I like to think we can be more civilized. 